Yes, sir. Hey, sir. I think we're back. Let's see what happens. Uh, I'll explain to you uh, off, off, off camera, off mic, or whatever. Another time, what's going on with this uh, this phone? I no, actually, we're good. Uh, I, I think it's a conspiracy. I think one plus wants <laughs> me to, one plus wants me to buy a new phone. That's the problem, you know. So now I can quote on on my moto and see what's going on. But let, let's just go from uh, in this day this day and age. Um, you know, where, where, uh, and perhaps I can, you know, well, let's, let's go this day and age. Because right yeah, now, yeah, what, what we really see is that, I think the biggest complaint is that because the police don't live in the community, they can't possibly be community policing, and therefore, you know, how are you going to change something anyway? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, it's even worse than that. You know, you have people uh, coming from, from anywhere to essentially take a test and become a, uh, become a police officer in a community that they may know absolutely nothing about. Mm. Uh, one of the, uh, the issues that police officers have, you know, you've got folks who come from the suburbs and then all of a sudden they're placed in an urban situation and they don't know what the hell is going on at all. Yeah, no training. They have no understanding <laughs> other than what they saw on TV or in the movies. You know, so uh, one of the things that has to happen is that Part of the training in any academy has to be making police officers familiar with the communities that they're policing. All right, that that has to be, you know, a, a demand that you know that people have to go ahead and have. And I think one of the issues that we're currently having in regards to Black Lives Matter and you know all of these uh, protests, etc., is that there are no clear demand. So therefore. I mean, what happens is when do you know in any kind of struggle when you have won or when you have made any kind of progress? Mm -hmm. The only way you can go ahead and, and say that you've won is when there was obviously a, a clear goal that you wanted to achieve. If there's no clear goal, then obviously you can't achieve that. Well, how's, how, of course, there, but, but there's no way that can happen. You have, first of all, you have... You have individual police unions in in different areas of the country. You have different. You have, I mean, it's it's a it's, it's like the COVID vaccine. There, there's no one unified thing. Everybody's yeah. doing their own thing. So that's. It's, it's, and it's, what has to happen is that in localities, that people have to come together and make demands that are specific to those localities. Just like I was saying before, where as police officers, prior to their being hired, they have to be familiar with their community, then of course the community has to be familiar with the issues that are related to that specific police department. There are certain things that are obviously you know, common to all of them, but at the same time, there are things that in fact can be somewhat different. Uh, so, you know, as an example, when people call for the defunding of police, you know, what does that actually mean? Well, you know, and I think, yeah, I, I think a there are lots of issues. You know, it's something that can be used as a weapon against you. You know, the idea that you're saying, well, we want the police defunded. Does that yeah. mean that you want all of the money? Do you want the police department disbanded? Do you think there should be abolition of the police department? That there's no clarity in regards to this, you know, and this particular demand. I think a demand that is probably more useful is the demand for community control of police and policing. But doesn't, right. that, doesn't that bring up another problem of, of, corrupt, of corruption for the people that's on, that's, 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 that's on the police or, 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 or even intimidation? You, you see the well, problem? Look, I mean, remember, uh, you know, going back years and years and years, uh, the first in New York, the first commission that came about to go ahead and look at the issue of police violence and police corruption was something called the Lexow Commission, which happened in the 1890s, okay? Mm -hmm. So it happened over 100 years ago. This has been an ongoing issue, the issue of corruption in terms of the police, the issue also in regards to violence back in the 19th century, the violence of police officers was meted out on people from the labor unions who were organizing. They weren't even unions yet. Uh, people from the labor movement, uh, folks who were poor. And in many instances, these people were white people.
they were other Europeans that they were brutalizing. Mm -hmm. All right, because in New York, as an example, in the 1890s, uh, you know, the uh, the uh, black population, the African population, was not that large. And at that particular point, there was uh, practically no Latino population, if we go back to 1890. All right, so... This idea of police violence is a historical problem. It originated uh, and was not just focused on African people, black and brown people. It was originally focused on mainly white people. There were ethnic issues. If you had Irish police officers, yeah. I.e. Gangs, gangs of New German, York, yeah, yeah, yeah. I German guess. residents, yeah. there might be an issue. If you were a Catholic police officer and you were in a Protestant neighborhood, there might be issues in regards to that. Mm. You know, uh, white people were far more, quote, tribal, mm. you know, back in the 19th century. And, of course, things happened to go ahead and create a more unified identity for white people. Mm. Now, of course, this raises the question, if, if white people in America, in the United States, have a more unified vision of who they are, do African people, do black people have a more unified vision of who we are? And if, in fact, we don't, then what is the problem? Okay, White people are able to identify as white people very easily. You know, African people, uh, you know, I'm not African, I'm Negro, I'm colored. You know, I'm whatever you, whatever it is, oh, no, I'm Jamaican, oh, no. I'm, uh, you know, I'm Nigerian. Oh no, I'm from Ghana. Yeah. Oh no, I'm from well, uh, oh, I'm uh, from South Carolina. Uh, let, let me oh, do. No, I'm from Brooklyn. Let, let me let me try to do a bridge here. I'm, in fact, let me do a personal bridge here, right? When I was about nine years old, we're talking about 1959 now. I ran away from home, right? And I ran to the Bronx Movie Theater because I lived in South Bronx. I lived in Paris and Projects. I ran to the Bronx movie theater. This was like early in the morning. I got my little suitcase, and I'm sitting there, uh, on the, right there, waiting for the movie theater to open, because that's the way, you know, I am. And a, a cop walked by, you know, I'm going to say white cop, of course, walked by, said, hi, how you doing? I said, I was on, I said what you doing? I'm running away from home, you know? <laughs> so I said, oh, well, where do you live? Oh, 340 Mars Avenue? Uh, okay, well, 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 come on, let's, let, let's, why don't you come with me? So I, he took my hand, well, I'm, I'm holding a briefcase of one, my suitcase in one hand, he's got the uh, other hand, and we walk home mm -hmm. <laughs> to my house, to, yeah. to my grandmother. <laughs> yeah. I didn't get no beating or nothing like that, you know, but she talked, he talked to my grandmother, da 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 da. Okay, now mm -hmm. that, now I'm, I'm bringing that because that's that that's that time, of course, is totally gone. But that is a thing of what we call, I mean, the police, the policeman didn't. The policeman, I know it's a child or whatever, have you, but the policeman was being like a, a sociologist, whatever. He was being, he was, he was being a human being. Let's put it that way. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And, and they had a different role. I exactly. mean, if you remember, uh, on television, in the newspapers, and it was always presented. Uh, there would be shows, and they would have Officer Joe. They yeah. would have Officer. Bill. Officer Joe Bolton. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah, would yeah, have yeah. these folks, and this was somebody who was part of the community who was essentially going ahead and, you know, doing things that we would figure that police officers would do. Hmm. Okay? That obviously changed. And it okay. changed let, let, drastically. Let me follow that change. Let me follow that. Mm -hmm. That's why I started there, right? Also, mm -hmm. when I was younger, we had the police athletic league, right? Where you had right. any boxing or whatever have you. But for, mm -hmm. I was out of the 40th precinct right there. Um, okay, fine. Now, at some particular point, now that means you had you, the police had a relationship with, with younger people in the community. Mm -hmm. At some people, particular point, and I'll tell you what a particular point was, and that was when the drugs, when they flooded the drugs in. Hold on just a second. What happened, of course, is the police, along with the politicians, along with the mafia, decided to have, to let heroin come into the, um, I'm supposed to say heroin, come into the South Bronx, as well as the Lower East Side, because they were like hubs, right? Because there were gangs there, and they wanted to dissipate the gangs. Now, now you have the thing of drugs and police having to corrupt, you know, to, to make their money off of drugs, okay? I'm going to jump real quick. Now we have the famous case, and you know this case, of Larry Davis, our uh -huh. hero, because they recruited him, well, they, they turned him when he was 13 years old. In other words, he should have been in the peace police athletic league back when, but but because things changed by the time he came in, the police are now using 
instead of instead of uh, teaching you know, boxing or whatever or being upstanding communities things they chose them to be to be their, their instruments to make money that i think yeah, is a yeah. turning point that but that's yeah. that's my that's my interpretation. But now, let's even go back you know you talk about paf when you were went to the pal the people who staff the pal were actually police officers yes Okay. Yes. It was officer so and so. Yeah. They were the people who actually were working in the police athletic league. Now, if we go to the police athletic league, that's no longer the case. It may be funded. Yeah. Do, do they by still money exist? I'm sorry. I, police, I, didn't, I didn't even know they still exist. Did they still exist? PAL? Yeah, they still have some, but they are not staffed by police officers. They are staffed by paid staff people who, in many instances, have no relationship to the police department at all. Okay. okay. I didn't even know Secondly, that. You, know, you talk about heroin, right? One of the things that we look in terms of when we see the rise of heroin, there were several other things that were happening. 1966, we have the call for black power. 1968. We have you know, some of the probably greatest disruptions of American society that we see. We have the Black Power Movement going ahead and beginning to go ahead and unite with the anti-war movement, the anti-Vietnam War mm -hmm. movement. We have all of these things. We have the assassination of Dr. King. And in order to go ahead and stop, you know, many people have, have done research in this, uh, Brother Herman Ferguson had a, uh, um, uh, I guess it was a monograph, we'd have to call it, it wasn't even a, a book, mm -hmm. where he talked about, you know, chemical warfare, that mm -hmm. drugs were chemical warfare yes. on our people. Yes. And one of the things that they sought to do is to stop the organizing that was going on, yes. the rebellions that were going ahead and being fostered, the positive movement of things like the Black Panther Party, the Black Power Movement, all of these things, and the anti-war movement, all coming together at the same time. Sure. And what better way to do that than to introduce heroin into the picture? Mm -hmm. So obviously, I mean, this is something that, that happened. So it wasn't just a matter of, uh, you know, going ahead and, and dealing with the gangs and the money and everything else. It was a political aspect. That particular corruption that took place. Well, it seems to me that that's what I'm saying. I, I'm 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 dating the heroin and flooding into the community back to like 1962, 1963, because what it was okay, time. Okay, early. You, you, no, early. No, I'm, I'm saying I'm, I'm doing that for a purpose. In other words, that was like the test lab. They said, "Ooh, that 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 worked." That's before they they realized that that's before you know people like like the like a Kennedy would come down and uh, swoop through Harlem and get his drugs and keep on going back up to Massachusetts or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So 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 what so what happens? I think is that they see, "Oh, this we can do it this way." They had a model, and so they just expanded the model. That's the that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, and and, and we have to remember and, and see. This is very interesting because uh, you look at the the Nixon era. Yeah. One of the things that happened uh, is they actually moved on marijuana. Marijuana was becoming uh, a, a drug of choice. There were, you know, the great smokings. People would have marijuana and were smoking it all over the United States mm -hmm. in order to stop that. One of the things they did, and I don't know if you remember this, they were spraying marijuana crops with this poisonous chemical called paraquat. Oh, I've heard that. Yes, yes, I know. I heard, right. that. I heard about if that. If you yeah. smoke this paraquat laced marijuana, it could kill you. Mm -hmm. So what happened is there was a shortage. But I always thought I always thought that was a, I always thought that was a rumor, though. I thought that was like a, a rumor conspiracy no. thing. Mm -hmm. No, no, I don't think I don't think it was totally a rumor. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that I do know is that the supply of marijuana was constricted, okay? And I know this, of course, from personal experience. Mm. So what happened then is if, in fact, you know, you were young, you wanted to get high or whatever else it is, you couldn't get any marijuana, the drug of choice that showed up in the community all of a sudden was what? 
Well, heroin. Your heroin, PCV. And your, and heroin. Then, uh, your heroin, yeah. Heroin. Yeah, true. Heroin. True. Yeah. Okay? Okay. So, once again, Nixon is saying we don't want marijuana, but the government is moving to go ahead and replace marijuana with heroin. And, of course, in terms of its impact, the effect, we see the difference in regards to the effect and impact of marijuana versus the impact in a Okay. Now, can, uh, Monsieur, can we do this? Um, uh, are you there? I'm here. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Um, um, I, I was recently listening to Judge Joe Brown. He had a very interesting take on this because, remember, he was a judge for a while, for a long time, both in L.A. and, I guess, in uh, Memphis, in Tennessee. So he sees... Yeah, he came out the hood. He got some convictions yeah. or something like that. Like he that. was a little yeah. gangster and criminal himself. Yeah, exactly. Now, here's the thing. He says, and this is very interesting, because, um, remember, you have all these police unions. What he says, all you have to do is you have to have, you have, to have the, uh, the police be insured. You know, in, in other words, what would happen if they sh shoot something, if they if something happens, then they're, 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 the insurance would have to claim it. In other words, they have to come out of the police union or something like that. He said something like, I can't, can't, can't quite, quite, quite what the thing, but it sounded very logical and very reasonable to yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. But I, I, have yeah, yeah. I, I have another solution. Yeah. I don't want to, let's stay on that. I have another solution. But yeah, yeah. Let, me just, let me just go into that quickly. One of the things that happens in most cities when there's a lawsuit against the police department. It is the taxpayers That's right. that end up paying mm -hmm. that money. Mm -hmm. That lawsuit is settled. First of all, in terms of the settlement, is that usually uh, in, in terms of the settlement, there is no admission of any kind of wrongdoing. There's just a financial payment that's made. Mm -hmm. That financial payment comes from the taxpayers. Another mm -hmm. solution would be is to take that money out of the police department budget. Mm -hmm. Okay? If you want to talk about defunding police, if in fact the police had to go ahead, they have no skin in the game. Mm -hmm. So if they have no skin in the game, you know, there's nothing that they have to be worried about in regards to the lawsuits and all these other kinds of things that happen uh, in, in terms of disciplinary issues. Yeah. So if in fact, uh, aside from the insurance claims or whatever else it is, if, in fact, it was part of the NYPD budget and all lawsuits for police misconduct would come out of the police budget, not out of the city coffers, not out of the taxpayer dollars, that would make a big difference mm -hmm. because they would see there would be another level of accountability in regards to what was taking place. Okay, now now let me tell you my solution. Just as, now remember, I'm an audio dramatist. That's all I am. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, you I know, I don't, you know, I, I, in fact, I have, I've always had my whole life have very good relationship. Oh, 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 I've never been all police, right? Okay, I'm talking about worldwide. Here's my thing. If, uh, this is just like a nail in the coffin kind of thing. If some cop, because they can, they can game this thing, shoot somebody, and uh, what happens, what happens is their pension would go to the victim's family. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing I would do. You know, because a lot of these people, you can see them scheming. Oh, if I shoot, I can get away with it, but I still get my pension. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going, no, I'll take that away immediately. Mm -hmm. I would do that immediately. Forget all of the, uh, that to me. Remember, I'm just an audio dramatist. You know, I'm, just, I'm writing a little play here. You know what I'm saying? So that's the first thing I would do because they get money for killing people. Take that money yeah. away and give it to the victim's family. Now we see what we're going to do. And yeah. of course, and, well, and, look, you know, if in fact there was some level of accountability where some of these folks would go to jail, they would lose their pension. All right. But the issue here is uh, just that question in terms of accountability. There is still little or no accountability in regards to police and policing across this country. Yeah. Uh, you know, police go ahead. And first of all, they start out with little crimes. All police officers probably go ahead and deal in little crimes. Oh, uh, Serpico. Uh, while they're driving. Yeah, yeah the, the Serpico will stop sign, take the apple, yeah. They yeah. will speed. Yeah. They will do different things. Above the law. That regular citizens will not do. Mm -hmm. So it starts there. Mm -hmm. And then it actually gets magnified. But yeah. again, I mean, we have to remember that it's just not a matter of murder. It's just not a matter of shooting or injuring people. It's just not a matter of that. There is... I mean, how many police officers have been uh, convicted and accused of sexual misconduct? Mm 
Uh, oh, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, but see, I, I don't, I don't want, I don't want to cut you off. But I have to tell you this, man. One of the things. This was about maybe ten years ago. Because I'm sitting in South Africa. I don't know what's going on. I get, I get sort of things. And there was a thing where police officers, when their first the tasers came out, they would actually tase a woman, a black, a black woman, and see just to see them writhing on the ground and showing their panties or whatever have you. You know, it's amazing. I'm going like, whoa, what's going on? Well, brother, I mean, in terms of the sexual misconduct, there was a case in New York where um, police officers had taken uh, uh, a, uh, a young lady home. She was drunk. Uh, then what happened is that one person stood outside, you know, kind of standing guard. The other person went upstairs and had sex with this particular woman. And, uh, I mean, they had all of this. They had a lot of this stuff on video. I mean, there was all different kinds of things. These people got off. Okay. Now, there was also, listen, let me just say, mm -hmm. there was issues of police officers taking women in custody and having sex with them. They had to pass a law in New York State which said it is against the law to have sex with someone who you have in custody. Mm. Now, that would sound like a no-brainer, yeah, that that would have been a law or mm. would have been illegal to do that before that. But in New York State, they had to pass a specific law that said that. Well, here's the problem I have with any of this stuff. We can, we, we, we can keep on going with uh, individual. We can, we can have examples upon examples. Every time you have an example, there's a law, and then the law gets, gets uh, you know, it's, it's gaming. It's gaming the system. Uh -huh. You know, no so 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 I, I, I forget this whole decency thing. I'm not even going to get into this this whole thing, but I'm trying to get to a point where uh, it's, there's real not accountability, but there's real consequences. Uh, yeah, uh, that's, but that's, 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 that's what I'm getting. It's just consequences. Yeah, that's, that's the and that's not a law consequence. I'm talking about accountable. Consequences. Yeah. The only time you become accountable is when there are consequences for your actions. If you act and there's no consequence, there's no accountability. So, I mean, essentially, that's what we're talking about, that there needs to be a level of consequence that goes along with the actions. And going back to my, my uh, idea in terms of community control of the police, that if, in fact, the community was in control of the police departments, then, in fact, there would be issues of accountability because there would be things that you just couldn't do. Yeah. There have been a couple of police departments in which the police department was disbanded. They fired everybody. But then what they did is they went ahead and created a hiring process where they would hire people back. Now, everybody who had gotten, quote, fired did not get hired back. Because as we know, with the case of this, uh, you know, Derek Chauvin, he it was. He was on the police force for all these years. He had all of these particular complaints against him. And here it is, he's out with rookies as a field training officer. Mm, yeah. How the hell does that happen? Yeah. Okay. How in the world <laughs> do you, as a very clearly tainted police officer, become the field training officer or the officer of the day yeah. going ahead and supervising yeah. rookies? Yeah. Well, look, Monsieur, uh, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I want to end it here for this for the, for this thing here because I uh, you know we, 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 it's the power I I have this whole thing about you know how 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 come every union gets disbanded but we have police unions whatever they call them these days you know but, hey, but, brother, but, yeah. you know, it's the stuff. but we we can we can keep on going down this for a long time we sure could okay. we sure could so let so so let me end this here and I want to talk politics if you have some time but let me end this one right here okay I'll talk to you in just a second all right.